So, time for top 10 tank tips. I've played my Paladin for nearly 3,000 hours, a lot of which on my tank. Now, I will admit, over the past year, I have been playing my tank a lot less, and I regret it a bit. There are definitely some things I need to focus more on. And so, hopefully, these tips will help you out as well, getting back out there, learning your tank even if it's for your very first time. Tanks are probably the easiest role to get into endgame content the fastest, just due to them being significantly cheaper to gear out to still perform their role adequately. Tip number one, stat prioritization. So as a tank, you want to get, first of all, your defense as high as possible. Then you want to get your awareness as high as possible. Just keep in mind of certain class features and abilities that might give you extra awareness depending on what you use. As a fighter, you would have your dig in tab ability, which would give you an additional 15% and thus you do not need to get 90%. You could just get 75% and be okay. After awareness, I would go critical avoidance and that's about it. You can pretty much forget about deflect and deflect severity. I know people may have watched my videos in the past and I was using that quite a lot. It's useful when tanking lots of ad groups, it will give you slightly more survivability in general, but having to tank something that hits you for a ton in one big hit, it's a lot easier to survive with just having a bit more crit avoidance. The healer can generally back you up the rest of the way. In general, you do not need to get any offensive stats to deal more damage, unless you're perhaps a barbarian tank, then you may want to focus on one or two of these stats just to increase your damage so you can increase your threat. Tip number two, practice with randoms. If you're starting out as a tank, I highly recommend just joining random groups. Join your random queues and just go through and practice that content. Practice tanking within it. Tanking is all about practice. You will learn to play with random people, learn to be a bit more patient with them on top of learning on what to expect when playing with those random people. You could stick to your exclusive group and always play with your friends, but as soon as you want to play then with some other people, you might be surprised at different ways people play, the different ways the different classes play. You could be playing with a cleric healer, you could be playing with a paladin healer, you could be playing with a cleric DPS or a rogue DPS and struggle in different ways, whether that's be threat or survival surviving. So make sure you put yourself out there and get as much experience as possible. Tip number three is learning the mechanics and the timing. So when you're running this random content, whatever it is, each of the enemies has different mechanics, different attacks, patterns, and so on. And as a tank, it's your duty to learn those patterns. The most challenging content right now for tanks is probably your Master Temple of the Spider and probably just this first boss. You need to learn the, the boss's patterns. You need to learn what mechanics she's going to do and when. And once you do so, Again, it gets a lot easier to predict what the boss is doing and how you should react. And that is all about tanking, learning what that new content feels like, what it plays like, how to respond to the enemies and how they react. What's their patterns? Because it's all about patterns. They, they don't have AI. They don't learn based off what you do. It's just written code, exactly what they're going to do every time. Yes, there might be a bit of RNG here and there thrown in, but those are still all patterns. And you can know and find out the trigger of something and then what's going to happen. And it can all be about responding to that. And so we move on to tip number four, time your shield. So it's really important that as a tank, you know what your shield is, what your block is. It's this ability to absorb hit points on your shield. And basically that will regenerate. So it's like a self heal pool where you can use to absorb damage and then regenerate it back doing certain abilities and so you can use that to your advantage. Your hit points are like that secondary pool. You want to 
always try and use as much of your shield as possible to absorb all the damage but you also want to learn again like i said the mechanics and the timing sometimes it might be optimal to just take the hit on your hit points and let the healer heal you another time it might be much more optimal to just block as much as possible and thus take a lot less damage and then have abilities to regenerate that shield back as quickly as possible the faster you can regenerate that shield it's basically again like a self heal so you need practice to learn the timing of that. You need to know the mechanics of when to use that block ability. On top of that, you will have like a secondary block, which will be used to block significantly more damage. And on a Paladin, that's again our tab ability. And it's the same tab ability you'll have on the Fighter and the Barbarian. They'll all give you like an increase to your shield, along with being able to have some additional effects to block some more additional damage but it will depend on the class how often you can use it and so we move to tip number five your stone of health your healing potion that's this thing right here we have like a greater stone of health and basically it will instantly heal you to full hit points if you're running just your regular random cues don't be afraid to get away with just using like some health potions it will also help you find the balance of playing with maybe not the best healer and still being able to survive in that content and yes ideally you could play without a stone of health altogether and that again is still a balance between the healer you're running with and your own survivability whether that's through your stats and also the powers you have to use we'll go into that in a future tip so a stone of health is so important i'll give you a quick clip we're fighting the first boss here in master temple of spider again and this boss can deal some nasty damage and you don't want to be using your stone of health until you really have to because of the 18 second cooldown. What happens if you use it and then you can't use it again? Have a look here. The boss is going to use her massive hitting power, which is like called her shocking execution. Just there. Bam. And we were on like no hit points and we would have died to her next hit if we didn't use a stone of health. And I know that has happened to me so many times. We'll skip back again. It's this hit right here. You should see my hit points. I'm on like maybe 5%. I've used all up my shield there. We blocked the hit. And then we immediately go to use our stone of health. And if we didn't, then her next attack would, would just have killed us. You can see there like the 269K. And that has happened to me so many times in this boss fight just because I got I got so lazy with using my stone of health. And without having that reaction time, you're going to die a lot more. And especially on this boss, it's one of those things you really need to learn. It's something I forgot how to do without playing tank for quite a while, without playing it in, in like any challenging content. And so that is definitely a big tip I would recommend you focus on. The timing of when and where to use your health potion or stone of health. It can come in so clutch. It will, of course, again, depend on your balance of your survivability and damage. And yeah, sometimes you can get away with having more survivability and take less damage and be all right. But the nature of the game is that enemies can crit you and you can fail to deflect and then they do a ton of damage. And that's why you would need that stone of health like you saw. So tip number six is uh, run with a good healer. Without a good healer, you don't really stand a chance unless you're a really good tank. You could stack things that would give you passive heal, give you self heal. There's not a whole lot of them in the game. You mainly have insignia bonuses that are going to do it. And outside from that, you're just going to be sacrificing a lot of things like team support or even survivability against like one shots. But ultimately, having a good healer will go a long way to helping you survive because you could be a terrible tank and if you have the best healer in the game you can get away with performing really badly if you're especially if you run with a paladin healer they can back up the tank so much with their added shields through their tab ability so yeah just having a good healer will give you a lot of room for mistakes we move on to tip seven and that's finding your balance tanking is all about that balance of making sure 
that the enemy is attacking you and not your allies. That's your duty as your tank, your primary goal. The enemy has to attack you, not your allies, or you're doing nothing for the team. And you have to be able to take those hits. So yeah, you need to find the balance for you. What is right? How much like threat do you need to generate in your group in order to make sure the enemy is attacking you all the time? And then from there, stack the survivability that you need in order to survive against those attacks from the enemy. So you need to work on finding the balance for you what is right. Where's that line of how much threat do I actually need? And then how much survivability do I actually need? And from there, the third option is stacking team support, which we'll go into a bit later of like the general team support you want to have for end game. But you will be using things that like increase your party's damage as your primary focus and then secondaries using things to basically help them survive a bit better particular content, you might need more of that than others. So tip eight is switching powers. Do not be afraid to just switch your powers. If you're in the middle of a fight, you can still switch your powers. It might be a bit harder on console. I have no idea. But also switching from like having to fight groups of enemies to having to fight just one enemy, you might want different power setups. So if I'm running a fight where I know I might die and might need more threat, I could run with like a hard taunt where it would place me on top of the threat list. If let's say I know I won't die or I'm fairly confident I won't, I might not need to run with that and I could actually run with a bit more survivability, giving me a bit more room for mistakes. But if I die, I'll end up heavily punishing the team by not being able to grab that threat back again quick enough. So again, it's about that balance, but don't be afraid to switch powers throughout a fight, switch abilities. Unfortunately, we can't switch feats. I would love to be able to do that whenever, but so be it. For the Paladin, an example would be using Templar's Wrath at the beginning of the fight and then later on in the fight switching over to Sacred Weapon instead. And that way, because you don't need the Templar's Wrath to get that initial burst of threat, you can just simply attack with your at will. Then having Sacred Weapon for also an additional restoration on your stamina can just be a little bit easier on you for more survivability and then also increasing your threat then with your at will attacks. So ultimately, you want to find that balance for you. Find what you want to be using and when and don't be afraid to switch power throughout the fight. Like if I am running this setup where I have no put yourself on top of the threat list, if I die, I will quickly switch to vow and then I'll revive and it should most of the time avoid the cooldown and then be able to use that on the enemy. So tip number nine is team support for end game. What you want to be using? Well, on your gear section, you generally want to just have a stronghold weapon set. You don't need anything that's just going to benefit you with survivability once you get to a certain stage, once you've learned basically how to tank adequately. But of course, again, that's all about like tip seven, finding your balance. But for end game, what you should be using, at least what's generalized and expected of you as a tank is a stronghold weapon set here that will increase everybody in your party's damage by 2%, their healing by 2% and reducing their incoming damage by 2%. You have mastered ones, you have Feywood ones, and you have older stronghold ones that you can find in the guild, but the mastered and the Feywood you can find on the auction house, along with also getting them through master crafting, which is seriously expensive and don't recommend going into it if you haven't already. Otherwise, you are expected to run the flash freeze in the team. That is a debuff. It reduces the enemy's damage, not just for you, not just against you, but against all of your allies. And it's a pretty good bonus, especially on certain boss fights where, where surviving becomes pretty uh, tough. Like on this second boss in Master Temple of the Spider. If your DPS haven't like uh, successfully got down the ritual strength or kept on top of it, then they'll all start dying to like one shots. And just having a flash freeze can help mitigate and maybe help them survive one or two extra hits. 
On top of that, on your companion page, you want to be running Armor Break. This is a team support buff that will reduce the enemy's defense, allowing all your allies to deal extra damage against them. And it's pretty much expected at this point that the tank always uses it. Additionally, you are expected also to run an active companion. You may see me very much of the time running an augment companion, and that is when I'm feeling insecure, I will run a companion that would give me bonus statistics to help me survive better. But ultimately, what you want to be aiming for is to have an active companion with team support. So for example, the tutor with 5% combat advantage, healers generally have been running this as their main lately. You might also want to be running the Black Death Scorpion. It has the ability to make it so that the enemy takes combat advantage regardless of positioning. Can help a lot in certain boss fights like the last boss fight in Master Temple of the Spider where she like teleports all over the place and so positioning for combat advantage flanking the enemy can uh, not be such an easy thing. And of course you will be wanting to run a primary artifact that's going to help your team deal extra damage. I've just posted a video about that but that's like all of these artifacts so make sure to have like at least one of the top 11 and you also want to have a mount which is going to increase your party's damage and you'd use your artifact and mount at the same time so you have like the eclipsed lion you have one of the t-rexes like this one here increasing everybody's damage or you'd have the pegasus or you would have the swarm which i don't have and I should really. And additionally, you want to have like Mystic Aura or Runic Aura. That is about it for the general expected team support that you can provide as a tank. Of course, you will have different ones on your class, like a Paladin providing critical strike. And you might also have then on a fighter running like enforced threat and so on. And if you want to take it to another level, you can run a race, which is also team support. I have the Azmar. And generally healers will actually use this. And I would recommend instead of the Azimar, you would run the Drow race. And that again, additionally reduces the enemy's defense by 5%, allowing your teammates to deal additional damage against the target. It's pretty much the best race you can use on tank for team support. So tip 10 is take the lead. As the tank, you are fully expected to go and initiate the fight first so that everything attacks you and again, not your allies. It would depend on the group, how quickly you want to proceed to the next group of enemies, how much damage your group has and how quickly again they will kill those enemies. And of course, in boss fights, you also have to be the one who's initiating the fight. You've got to take that lead. On top of that, you can learn when to call artifacts like I am. Again, in my previous video, I have that command in the description as well. And you could have it just like I have. So you can call that artifact call right when you see it suitable and just take the lead as the tank. Make sure you're the one ahead of everybody and that nobody's running ahead of you. Just try and keep up and try and be that leader. Of course, if you're new to the game, you may be a little bit more shy. You may be a little bit more reserved just because you're unsure of what you should be doing. But with time and practice, you will get there and you should technically be the leader of the group. The person who's sorting out who's using what and when you should start the fight and so on. When to tell people to wait and ultimately just be the leader of the group. Now, that's not going to be the case everywhere and it's not fully expected of you, but there is a certain amount, yes, expected of you of what you should be doing. For example, initiating the fight first, but you want to make sure that your healer's with you and also your few DPS or of course, the, the, the enemies will just wreck you. So hopefully these top 10 tips will help you out become a better tank within Neverwinter. Tanking, in my opinion, is fun. It's a lot more relaxing once you learn the mechanics compared to like a DPS who's trying to compete on the pain giver boards, who has to spend so much resources to try and maintain that to be all serious. And ultimately, the best tip I can give you is just don't die as the tank and hold the attention of the enemies. That's about it. Get good at doing that.
Another massive thank you to all of these channel members for helping me keep my channel going. You can support me just by clicking the join button for as little as one euro a month. So we'll see you guys around. Goodbye for now. Oh, and P.S. If you have any other tips you want to add, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I'm sure people will enjoy reading them and we can help any new potential tanks out there.